Welcome in everyone, welcome to the week three of the uh, pass, pa Puff Pass and Kick Sports Show. Thank you pal, we're, we're going to work on it. Uh, that was Lady Dragon, she put, she put some work in while I was working. So uh, very thankful to Lady Dragon, she is out grabbing groceries right now. We'll be back soon, so we're kind of on our own. But, uh, but luckily there isn't too much moderator work for this stream. But welcome in everybody, hang on, let me get uh, our good buddy here, Carrie, unmuted from C-Note TV. You are on hot mic there, Carrie. But, What's going on, everybody? Oh, that's so much better, so much clearer. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so welcome in everyone, welcome to week three, let me get, uh, let me get Guns N' Roses off here, and we will get going. So week two, wow, just, yeah, you know, a, what a shocker, holy crap, dude. you know, I'm not gonna lie, your boys pulled that shit off, I did not think that Cooper Rush could have done it, but, barely. Uh, let's just say barely, dude, that game barely. ruined so many tickets for me, it wasn't even funny, um, I figured that the Bengals had that one in the bag, but uh, yeah. no, uh, you know, tip of the cap to the boys. Uh, hell yeah, of a game. Yeah, for real. My, my wife, I had a beer in my hand, and I'm just pacing around my living room the entire time. My wife is like, dude, just sit down and relax. I'm like, I can't. I can't. They had a 17-point lead, and they blew, almost blew it. Almost blew it. No, I, so, that was... That one was uh, crazy. That was intense, man. But that was there was a lot of games like that. There was a lot of shit that I did not expect to happen. But and this has been my problem is because I do this at the start of every season. I keep going back to the end of last season, and that's who I keep identifying the teams with. So I've got to stop doing that. Ski TV, what's going on, pal? Thank you so much for coming in. Let me get your shout out here. How are we doing today? Uh, we are doing an NFL Picks show with uh, CNO TV. So if you're not following him, Ski TV, please uh, give him a follow. Good friend of mine. Thank you. No problem, pal. Hang on here. I don't have Lady Dragon here, so I got to do all my. I, I got to look like a <laughs> schmuck here and do my own shout outs. But, um, but no, thanks everybody Bro, for tuning in. On some real stuff here right yeah. now. I feel like you guys should send an email to Coca-Cola and try to get sponsored. Dude, it is... Uh, I, actually used, I used to be a purchasing agent for uh, for one of the largest hospitals here in Western Canada. And I know a guy. Like, I've got a very good rep with Coca-Cola. And I've you sat there and I thought should. about it. But then, at the on the other hand, I don't know if I want to be sponsored by something so sugary. Because if we had that shit, like, on tap here... Oh my God, bro! Um, you know, the, the, the old dental bills would be amazing. I love Lady Dragon, but I don't think she's got the willpower power to say no. If I keep any more than twelve cans here at a time, uh, you know, yeah. I feel you on that, dude. I have just two liters in my fridge that I've not touched lately. Just yeah. like, oh, I'm struggling. Like uh, uh, all in that said, you know, I get a really bad heartburn. Like I, I don't, uh, I have the odd pop and stuff like that. But yeah, no, Lady Dragon can go. That's there's one thing, yeah, uh, cappuccinos and Coca Colas, man. It's, I have to buy a budget weed so just so we can afford the rest of it. <laughs> I feel you, dude. I feel you, but bro. Let's, go ahead. As a start off, can I can I start off with just this one right here? Absolutely. Do you, mind, do you mind if I start off with the, the main score? Because there was one specifically that I circled that you were like, this is my upset of the week. Go I don't know it. if you remember and have this written down, but you had the Cardinals in an upset to cover by a field goal over the Raiders. You nailed that shit. Too nailed bad, it. Too bad I, I didn't fucking bet on that, it. That overtime fumble scoop and score at the end is what got it for you. But it, you nailed it. You nailed it. And Whether or not you went by the over or not. I think we both went over. Hold on. Hold probably. On. I would have at least said 50 points, I think. Yeah, I think it was 51. 51 and a half was the over. What was the score? Hold on. Where is it? Yeah, I think you got that. Yeah, yeah you I definitely got that. So we both went over. I chose the Raiders to win and the Cardinals to cover, which I failed on. But, man, you nailed it. 
So but like that I was said, that, that Bengals Cowboys game destroyed a lot of tickets for me. But it totally. was what it was. Uh, it would have killed me too. Like I told my wife, I was like, I'm glad I didn't put money down on this because I was expecting the Cowboys to get utterly destroyed. You know what? Between that one and the Steelers game, but we'll get to uh, both of those. But let's start at the top of the ticket here. Uh, yeah. We'll we'll breeze through this uh, week two. Uh, so what happened? The Dolphins Ravens game was ridiculous. That was, that was such insane. a good fucking game. Eighty points scored. I'm pretty sure we had a high over in that game. Uh, I can't um, remember. I think I took the Dolphins in the upset. I might have, but I might have. Uh, I might have chicken shitted before the show and went with the Ravens. But uh, well, that was a hell of a game. Uh, you had Miami to cover. At least I had that going for me. Yes, I put the Ravens to win by three and a half, and you took Miami to cover, and you won that. So that was a win. That was a win for you too. I'm like, holy shit. That man. was Gordon's a ridiculous. It. Like I said, I hit some, but the problem is I can never get them on the same ticket. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. I feel you. But yeah, that game was amazing. Like both quarterbacks went bananas, Dude. especially Tua. Tua went out of control. I was not expecting that out of him at all. You know what? And, and I'm kind of happy for the kid. Like he kind of needed that game. Everybody's been talking dirt about him for so yeah. long. Like you know, I'm not exactly on the like I was on the Fitzpatrick bandwagon for sure. I didn't think yeah. uh, they did him dirty there in in Miami. I wasn't a huge fan of that. But if Tua can keep playing like this, man, but maybe, uh, you know, uh, Mike, what is it, McDaniel? Or McDaniels? Yeah. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, if he, um, maybe that was it. That was the key. And maybe they're going to stop throwing games now. I still believe that was a real thing. But, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. but yeah, we'll go on to Ski TV Lives. Go Jets. Jets 31, <laughs> Browns 30, son of a bitch. They came back. Who would have thought Joe Flacco still had it in him? But, you know, Joe Flacco is turning out to be this generation's Vinny Testaverde. He has played everywhere, will play everywhere, and fuck did he ball out. But didn't expect it to happen. It wasn't a pretty game, but the Jets got it done. I probably I probably would have said under twenty for that fucking score. I really didn't think there'd be that many touchdowns. Yeah, no, not at all. Not from the Jets. I would have figured that the Browns would have taken them down, and they probably I would have thought that the Browns would have won by at least a touchdown. But no, it was a one point game. Yeah, uh, no, a uh, hell of a game. Where did I write it down? I have it. It here. probably wasn't even important enough to write down. So, you know. I think you're <laughs> right. I don't think I did. Oh wait, no, I did. Oh shit. Cleveland to. I put Cleveland to win by 14. I probably didn't and, disagree. And you also <laughs> had Cleveland to win by a special team score. Well, that didn't happen. They did it on Thursday <laughs> night, but that didn't happen yeah. for me now. But we'll get I to had it. To look, it was so deep in our score list that I did not pay attention to it. I was just like, eh, it's a throwaway game. Right? It's one of those that, that, was, <laughs> that, that was just the flyer. Now, on to the Washington Commanders, 27 losing to the Detroit Lions. 36 by the Lions, 27 by the Commanders. Carson Wentz is who I thought Carson Wentz was. So, yeah, um, yeah I'm kind of happy. I'm really happy for the Lions. You know what? I, I really hope that the Lions get to 500 this year. I really, really hope they do. Um, the way that the Packers have been playing, I actually think it might happen uh, if they don't get yeah. their shit. Uh, if they don't get their shit together, and we'll get to unless the uh, unless Aaron Rodgers hits us with another R E L A X, you know what I'm saying? If you he know, hits us with another relax, you know, know, everybody chill out type thing. He situation. might have to, but I don't know if you've seen the injury report there, C note. But this week they've got no receivers, and they're up against Tampa Bay, who also has no receivers. So I yeah. think. Uh, I luckily, I, I have him. Aaron Jones in fantasy football, so I'm hoping that motherfucker eats all day today. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. yeah, the the Lions, the Commanders. I didn't watch it. I saw I saw some highlights. Jared Goff, you know, and and this is the question. This was like the Commanders and the and the Jaguars, right? Like, yeah. Are the is it just they're playing against shitty defenses and it just it's still too early that we haven't really exposed them as that yet. So, it could very well be. And I'm also sitting here thinking, like, with the Tua performance and how Jared Goff did, I'm like, 
You know, I know people shit on these guys. I know they do. Like, they're not good, blah, blah, blah. They are still pros. They they were able to get to this level. So it's it stands to reason that every once in a while they're going to have, like, ridiculously insane performances. Well, and that's just you know? Jared Goff. Like I said, I throw him in that, uh, in that Alex Smith quarterback. You know, he's the... He's a guy. He he can learn how to manage the game. It's going to take him a little longer than most. He didn't have, you know, and it's not that he didn't have tools in coaching in L.A. The, you know, it, it wasn't the same, you know, like when Jeff Fisher was around with the Rams. But yeah. it's, I don't know, it just didn't pan out. Some people just don't pan out, and sometimes you want them to. Like, we talk a lot of shit about, you know, the quarterbacks uh, after... Peyton Manning that went to the Broncos, you know, and now it's probably going to be the same thing in Seattle. Like, Geno's yeah. looking good, but is Geno the answer? Is Geno going to win you a playoff game? But That's true. Uh, here's another and, fucking shocker from last week, though, and this one yeah. really bugged me. Indianapolis yeah. Colts at the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars shut them out and put up 24 points up that on was the a shocker. Colts. That was a shocker because we both had the Colts to cover. I'm pretty sure that 99% of the fucking NFL fandom had uh, the Colts to cover that one. But yeah. uh, that was, ah, what the fuck? Like, and I think Michael Pittman's still out today. But so, what, is Matt Ryan done? Like, is this why no one touched Matt Ryan? Like, should they have kept Carson Wentz? Like, these, Probably. Fuck. Probably. But who knows, man? Maybe it was just like an unlucky day. Luckily, you know, the uh, the just... Chiefs got him today, so I'm I'm feeling a little good about that game. But yeah, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's all I can say. I don't even want to talk about that one. That one just hurt my head. Wow. I had to take a leave after that one. But that was uh, brutal. But at least your Chiefs should have another W this week. You know what? You this know? is the thing with the Chiefs. Yeah. We always used to open up the season against Houston. The Chiefs are notoriously bad against the AFC South. Like, it is retarded. How, you know, I'm sorry, I don't mean you to use that word, but it is nah. bad. It is fucking bad the way that we lose to mediocre teams. But this was the same with the NFC East. I remember coming yeah. off a of bye week full throttle with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, and we lost to the Giants. And wow. we lost bad. And I think that was one of three games they won that year because that's the year they went on to uh, pick Saquon. So, you know, they had a high enough draft pick. Like, But we have notoriously done bad against the AFC South. Um, we'll get to that game because I'm, I'm leery, but I think the Chiefs should have this, no problem. But let's get on. Uh, let's power through this. Panthers, 16. Giants, 19. Again... No. Are they both just such shit, or was this a hard-fought battle of a game? I think this might have been more of a hard-fought battle. Like, the Giants, who did they play last week? That was the Panthers last week. I mean, the week before, sorry. Oh, uh... Week one. I thought it was a... Was it a division game? It might have been. I want to say the Eagles. But I might be... Oh, you know what? I think it was the Lions. It was the Lions, I think. Yeah, it was, because they're 2-0 and right now. Yeah. So they're playing the Lions, and then they go up against the Panthers. I don't know. Maybe it's a big cat thing. I don't fucking know, man. But it seems like the Giants are slowly getting their shit together, which is kind of scary for me, to be honest with you. Well, the thing is, sometimes it's coaching, dude. Like, I think after the Coughlin era, the Giants were so fucking lost. The biggest mistake they did was, uh, what's his nuts? Ben McAdoo. That is yeah. when that is when shit hit the fan, and then you know what you do, you get rid of McAdoo. You, you you get Jason Garrett, and no offense, he did some great things for you guys. He really did, but those last two years, not great. You know the guy smiles and claps. You brought his shit. He lost, and you brought his scheme to your team, hoping that fucking miracle. Something, something was going to happen, but it doesn't. It doesn't. And people do this. Like, and I don't know why. It's just, this was like the Adam Gase theory, too. It's like, ah, he sucked in Denver, but he'll be fine here. No, fucking Peyton Manning made Adam Gase look good. That's all that yeah. that was. That's all but that I, that I will say this. I will say this about that. The Giants were so bad 
They were so bad that, yeah, Jason Garrett probably could have improved them. It didn't work out, but I, I think that might have been their thought process. Like, they were that bad. Because we were at least getting to the playoffs. We were one and done, but we were at least getting there. And maybe they were like, all right, hey, man, maybe this is an upgrade. If we can just get to the playoffs, maybe we can make something happen. And it didn't work out for them. But yeah. I can see their thought process there. Like, and I, and I get it, too. And the thing is, you only got so many, like, tested coaches that are yeah. uh, that you can come out of. Like, but now, you know, you got the McVay coaching tree that's going out there lighting it up. But, yeah, yeah, I don't know. That was another one. I didn't pay attention to that. Um, I didn't have much riding on that in fantasy, so it didn't really care. But, uh, you know, Giants are 2-0 under Dayball. Maybe Dayball was the answer. Now we'll move on to my upset of the week. I know yep. that the Patriots were favored. I know... That that's where the line was going. I still think it's bullshit. Steelers lose to the Patriots 17-14. Uh, yeah, I figured that the Steelers would have won and covered that one. Uh, yeah. They didn't play bad. They didn't play bad. I don't think it was a great game. But they definitely, not having TJ Watt out there, made it's, a huge, huge difference on defense. It's hurting them. Because, yeah, we both had the Steelers to cover on this one. So, yeah, it's definitely hurting them because I thought they would have won that game. Yeah, but Bill Belichick has never gone 0-2. So I should have known. I should have. I keep betting against that man, and it keeps costing me money. But uh, we'll move on to the next one. Falcons were at the Rams. Rams pull out the 31-27 to win. That one, I almost thought the Falcons were going to come back and win that. I really did. Yeah. Yeah, it's you know what they're zero two, but they're they're showing a bit of fight in each one of these games. Like they're not going down easy. They're they're not going to so, be an zero and eighteen team. They're going to put up. I think they can put up four or five wins this year. I think they can. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you know, not having well, you know, not having Julio Jones, which he probably they didn't have him for a couple of years now, but still, like that's. That's I, a problem, but I, they still seem to be fighting, man. Like they've got a team, man. The only thing is the quarterback's questionable, right? They threw Mariota in, and not to say today any shit about Mariota. Mariota yeah. is a solid, solid backup quarterback. Um, yeah. But Desmond Ritter is drafted. He will be the future or heir apparent, anyways. So uh, you know what's the worst? Even if they go in, it's shitty. But you're still losing, and this is like what the Chargers used to do under Philip Rivers. Uh, but Philip Rivers was a QB. He just didn't have every tool available to him at all times because they either had yeah. a fucking crazy running game or insane receiver. Like, there was never both together. I don't yeah. think that the Falcons are poorly constructed. I don't think that they're poorly coached. I just think the problem is until Desmond Ritter is good, they aren't going to be able to break 30 points a game. So they've basically got to maintain. I don't think their defense... Is what it used to be, like. They're yeah, they're definitely gonna have to pick up some people in free agency yeah. to be able to make that happen. Like they're they're just gonna have to. Like if you can't, if you don't have an explosive offense like that, like you're gonna have to pick somebody up to help you out. Well, you got Kyle Pitts, but the problem is your O line is so depleted that he's got to block, right? Because Kyle Pitts, yep. he he should be, you know, the next Antonio Gates. Like yep. he is gonna be that guy, but he's got to block. Because they have no one else. Lions for the win. We went over it. Congrats, Slim. Welcome in. If you're not sure what we're doing, this is the Puff Pass and Kick Show with myself and my good buddies, Carrie from C Note TV. If you guys are not following Carrie, please give him a follow. But uh, yeah, it has just been an absolute week. But we'll keep cooking through these games so we can talk about. All the fucking games I'm going to lose betting on this week. So, <laughs> let's get on with, uh, hang on here, let's go Saints and Bucks. You know, I had the Saints to cover by three, and I was wrong on that, and I'm assuming that Tom Brady and the Bucks were tired of losing to them. You know what? I think that's what happened. Remember, the, like, remember when I this. told you I, I got to stop betting against Tom Brady? Uh, yep. This is why. Uh They'll pull it out, but the problem is this week they've got a lot of problems. They got a lot of receivers out. Mike Evans is suspended for one game. That fight was hilarious, but yeah. Um, but yeah, like they've got no one. And by the sounds of it, Cole Beasley might be playing today. 
So when wow. we're relying on Cole Beasley, they dry, I think they signed him on Monday or Tuesday. And yeah, he got elevated from practice squad. I think he's getting his uh, getting everything up to par. But from what I heard, he will be uh, he 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 might see some snaps today. But we'll get to now. Let's the... be let's be real about Cole Beasley for a second here. So he's played in Dallas, he's played in Buffalo, and now he's playing in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Cole Beasley is a hell of a receiver. That man has got some skills. Okay, I'm not gonna hate on Cole Beasley any way, anyhow. That man has got hands and he's got speed. Might be a little guy, but man, he gets shit done. You know, let's be real. I've seen him do it for two different teams now. I uh, so, I'm a big Beasley fan, so I am not going to uh, disca- discredit anything you said there. He is a smart player. He is yeah. this generation's Wes Welker. Um, yeah. He knows what to do. He is a great slot. Uh, you know. I can't say enough good things about him. I didn't pick him up off the waiver wire in fantasy football just because I don't know how it's going to go. But, yeah, they are depleted. Uh, I don't know if Godwin's back. Um, it might be Russell Gage and then Cole Beasley all day today, but we'll get to that game shortly. So let's just uh, get through a couple more games here quick. Uh, the uh, 49ers, Garoppolo comes back, defeats the Seattle Seahawks 27-7. to uh, yep. Your Cowboys, like I said, big win. Cooper Rush, 20 to 17 over the Bengals. We have the Denver Broncos, the shit bowl of the day, uh, pulling out a 16 to 9 win over the Texans. Uh, I don't think Russell Wilson is who they thought they were. I know they're going to blame coaching because Hackett is going to be out way before Russell Wilson is. Um,. If that happens, I would I, maybe Sean Payton. Uh, the yeah. Cardinals Raiders game we talked about that was the absolute insane game yeah. of the week. That's my sizzle popcorn pick for Week Two's yeah. game of the week. Uh, gr- uh, the Green Bay Packers beat the Bears um, on the back of Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon. The receiving core for the Packers is highly suspect right now. Um, Fuck, I don't know what to say, but we'll get to that game. The Bills, the Bills lay it down on the Titans. The Titans are uh, heading in a downward spiral right now. Start Malik Willis. What else do you have to lose? Yep. And then this was my surprise: the Eagles beating the Vikings twenty-four to seven. And I know you don't like talking about them, but are the Eagles a real fucking team again? So far, so far this season, yeah, yeah, they are. But, but I'm hoping, I'm as a Cowboys fan, I'm hoping no. But as what I'm seeing, yeah, they're a real team. They're they're what's up. It's gonna be really, really hard to stop them. So I'm like, shit. These uh these divisional games are not gonna be fun. You know what? That's the problem sometimes because that was my issue when Peyton Manning was in our division. And I had Alex Smith, because right yeah. now, you know, I, I know what it is to play for second banana, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen with Dak. I really don't. I, I'm, if, if we don't know, I'm hoping Cooper can keep this shit up. You know, <laughs> you know I'm sorry for the language, but I'm no. hoping, I'm no. hoping that he can. You know, ditch some of those errant throws that were almost like, I don't know, four or five different interceptions during that game that just happened to get dropped, but if he ditches those, I think I think we might actually have a shot still. I still. think I think you guys are good. I think you guys can get your wild card. I, I think it is yeah. very possible in the NFC this year to go get that wild card because some teams are absolutely struggling. But let's yeah. work on this week. Week three NFL picks. So we'll uh, quickly go over the uh, the Thursday night game let me get rounds my twenty nine. Oh, what's that, sir? Just let me get my notepad out real oh. quick. <laughs> yeah. I like to write these things down. I know you so are. I have a, you are an organized motherfucker, sir. But <laughs> I, if you only knew how unorganized I actually was. <laughs> you know what the thing is for, and that's what I joke with uh, Lady Dragon about is you know I can find the energy to do football work. Uh, yeah. You know, it's it's other shit. Fix the door. It'll happen when it happens. Uh, yep. But yeah, but all right. So we got the Browns. The uh, they won twenty nine to seventeen over the Steelers on Thursday night. 
The Steelers are struggling. I don't think this is a Mitch Trubisky thing. I think this is an overall team thing. Without TJ Watt, I think that game, they could have had that game. Browns look good. They ran the shit out of the ball. Um, yeah, um, I don't think the Steelers uh, are going to have a great season. Um, you know, they drop. They've still got the, the Ravens twice. Like, this isn't... Yeah. Uh, they're they're going to have a rough road up, um, and that's it. Do you pull Kenny Pickett in? I don't think it's going to make any difference to Mitch Trubisky right now. I really don't. I think this yeah. is an all-around team. They can't keep him up. Um, that old line is hurting. It is not what it used to be. Um, but, yeah, like, I can't say that I'm surprised, but uh, the Browns... The Browns and Ravens are going to run away with this division, I think. If the Bengals can't win this week, um, you know, we're, we're going back to, to to years of old. I think the Ravens are going to finish first in this division, barring injury. So, Go ahead. Okay, so you just you just answered my question. I was like, well, who do you think out of those two teams, Browns or Ravens, will actually make their playoff? And if they do, how far in the playoffs do you think they will? If the Browns did make the playoffs, I don't see them making it past the wild card. The Ravens, I can see going second, third round. I can see the Ravens making it through. If uh, we got J.K. Dobbins back today, so yeah. if the uh, so if the Ravens can, and that's the thing, man, the Ravens are just missing a running game. That is it. Yeah. They are they are a running game away from a Super Bowl, I think. So, so it's one running back because basically Lamar Jackson is their running game. If you think about it. Yeah. If they get one dope running back, they're, they're there. And that's it. And I think that's it. Not to say anything bad about who they've had. I just don't think they've really has ever established. Um, and I hate to say it, since Ray Rice, there hasn't been You're right. one running back that has really done the work. Um, yeah. But it is hopefully one day they'll, they'll find that guy. It's not like there's a shortage of running well, backs. I'm pretty sure they keep them in a warehouse in Texas and they just pull one out of the <laughs> Yeah. Well, let's put it. Maybe the hey, Now that you say that, if, if, if Elliot doesn't prove his worth in Dallas, he might end up a Raven. Right? You know what? You never I know. would love. You know who I would love to see? Who? Christian McCaffrey. As a Raven? As a Raven. That would be way too dangerous for the NFL, sir. I, I don't know if I'd want to see that. It would be fun to watch, but oh my God. The you thing is, he's going to be hurt Christian at McCaffrey. least six games. But I yep. think you can manage those six games without him to win. But I just feel Christian McCaffrey needs to go somewhere else. Um, yeah. I feel so bad for that guy. But I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. But we'll, we'll move on. And speaking of Christian McCaffrey, we have the Saints at the Panthers. Um, actually, what is our line on this one? Uh, let's see. They have... DraftKings has the Saints winning 22-19. Ooh. I'm not so opposed I don't know. to that. I don't know. Because I'm not, like I said, this is only week, what, three? Yeah. So you don't know what they're going to pull out. But from what I'm seeing out of the Panthers right now, I'm pretty sure the Saints, one, are going to be pissed if they just lost that game to the Bucs. And two, on paper, they're actually better in almost everything except for defense. And it's defense is close. So... I'm thinking the Saints should be able to pull this one out, and I would give them, uh, I don't know how much they win by, I would say, let's just say a field goal, just in case, you know, Baker Mayfield decides he wants to pull some magic out of his ass. Well, and that's, and I think today, <laughs> I can't remember the injury report, Kamara is back today, so that is going to be a big oh. boost. I think Jameis Winston's playing, because Taysom Hill is out. So should something happen okay. to uh, to Jameis, who knows? I think that New Orleans has a stout defense. I don't think Baker Mayfield's good enough to get by them. Um, I agree. I would take the Saints. Um, my line here is two and a half for the Saints. Yeah, I I yep. take I I take the spread at two and a half. So. What's our over under in this game? I'd look at that. 41 and a half points. I don't know if they'll get that. Ah, uh, maybe. They might. I would. Can I. I can't do it. I can't do can it. Can I take. Yeah. 
I'd say it's going to be 40, uh, but I, I can't take 41 and a half. I'm like, cause is there any way, like, when they, not to throw us off or anything like that, but as far as betting goes, because I'm not really in the betting world like that, but you know how they do the over is 41 and a half or, like, the under 41 and a half? Is there anything where you can take the dead on? Like, let's say it's 41. I want to take this game to hit 41. Do they allow you to do I that? I don't think I've ever seen it on a full point. I think huh. it's always been on a half. Yeah, everything I look at's always been on a half. Gotcha. Okay. All right. So Corey has the same. I got us both with the Saints to win by three or to cover. To cover, right? Yeah. To cover. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sorry, I like writing these down just for next oh. week, so I remember because I will not remember all these games. Oh, dude! Honestly, I keep like, telling myself I'm gonna go back through the VOD. I'm gonna see, and then I'm just like, oh, I don't have time for this. <laughs> Plus, your well, boy's got a little bit of back problems right now, so he had to blaze up a little bit so he doesn't feel it. So there's oh, no way I'm okay, going to remember man. this. I have to freaking write this down. So. I got up about four hours ago up early. I went to bed way too early. I'm getting way too old for life. But we'll move yep. on to the next one. And fuck, oh, I don't know about this game. We got the, uh, the Texans at the Bears. Oof. Oof. That is uh, as equally matched as you can get. Like, yeah, FanDuel has the Bears winning by three. It's a three-point spread for them. I, I think I would take them. I think I would take them. The Bears? Yeah. I'm going to rock with that. I don't know about Houston, man, so I'm probably going to take the Bears to cover. I don't know if I would get them. I'd give them two and a half, yeah. Cover. What's our... Uh, 39 and a half. 39 and a half? You think, mm, I think they could get that. I would take the over on that. You know what? To be honest. I'm going to go under. I would. I think this You're is going to be... I think this is going to be a 30-point game. You said it was 30, 30 and a half? 39 and a half? Yeah. 39 and a half? 39 and a half, yeah. But I would, oh, no. I'm going under that. Yeah, I can't see there being more than 30 points scored in this game. I have like unless the defense is completely collapsed, but I don't know that that the Chicago Bears Soldier Field's grass is so bad that I can't see like the Bears know it better than the Texans. Texans are used to AstroTurf. Uh, yeah. David Mills is good. I just don't think he's got a team around him. Like your your running back is Rex Burkhead. Um, yeah. I just I can't see the Texans. Like, if they were going to win, this would be the game to win, but I just don't see it happening today. Uh, they look like absolute dog shit yesterday. And before we go on to the next one, I would like to go into our field maintenance of the week moment. Why is the Bears' grass so bad? What's what's going on with it? What's well, this is why they're talking about moving it out to Austin, though. Wait, what? You haven't heard all that shit? No. They were talking about moving the Chicago Bears to Austin because of the field. They have a field there. Because I can't remember, the owner has some kind of land out there as well. But that was that's been they've been talking about this for about four years very quietly. But so, uh, wait, or Arlington, sorry, Arlington, gonna... Arlington, not Austin. So the team is actually going to fully move. Like they, like they have talked players. about moving it to a different stadium. Um, oh. But then I think it was at the beginning of the season. I might have to look into this. I think they had struck a deal, and it, 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 there was a billion dollar rental deal, but okay. I don't know if the NFL had approved it, but okay. uh, they were supposed to be getting overhauled, because what was happening as well, who was it? Was it, it was the 49ers, I think. Their field was so bad that people kept getting hurt, like in oh, the end shit. zone, right, because it was a straight grass, so they had to rip all that shit out, put Astro Turf down a candlestick, like it was a whole thing, so um, wow. but I remember there's something going on with the Bears, because they were talking about moving them. Um, because the state of the stadium was so bad that they, they, it was apparently, like, they were talking about it on the Rich Eisen show, and I think someone had said that the, the, the floors are so cracked through the concrete that yeah. it's, like, it, it's at a point. But uh, all I know, actually, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just look it up now. Uh, so would this be a, like, they're no longer a Chicago team anymore type move? Or, like, this would be, like, a when Minnesota's stadium ceiling collapsed because of the snow type shit and they had to play in the... the I gold, think it's going to be the uh, the latter there. I know they were talking okay. about it because I think it would, they were going to 
McAfee was joking that they were going to be the Arlington Heights Bears or some shit. Um, <laughs> but okay. uh, hang on, just... stadium. So Soldier Field, I can't remember what's going on. Okay, so they are going to build, yeah, so September... So the only potential project for the Bears are exploring a new stadium development in Arlington Park. Da, da, da. So I don't know. I don't think anything has passed. This was from uh, last week. Okay. Or actually two months ago. Sorry, it's not July. Because I think people in Chicago would fucking riot if they lost their football team. Yeah, apparently this is the way it's moving. So oh, it's going to be moving boy. to Arlington Heights. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, well, either way, the bet. We're going to have a, another Texas team for a while. You know what? I, <laughs> it's, you get to a point where I just feel that Jerry Jones should just house every NFL team. Uh, that's he should. It. There should be, you know, the North and South stadiums, and that's it. Like, like fuck. There is, uh, like, Texas is just overwhelmed, I feel. I feel like you guys have too much football. I think I, we need no, to send some hockey down there. Uh, I mean, let's be real. New York has the same issue. <laughs> it's like we got the that Jets, is the true. Giants, that and is the Bills. True. I'll, I'll give you that. All right. So, now let's go on to the Chiefs at the Colts. I believe the Chiefs, uh, I, I believe they have this one, hands down. I very I much they hope do. they do. It's a five plus. It's a five point spread. The Chiefs are favored by five, uh, according to Caesars. Um, they have the edge on pretty much everything except for defense and rushing. But, I mean, come on. <laughs> so it's, I'll, come um, on. I'll take the Chiefs to win, Chiefs to cover. Yeah. What's my total points? 50 and a half. I oh. for sure feel that that can be reached. Oh. I have it for 51. Caesars has it at 51. So, I mean, I know they're all different. different I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that, that would involve... Now, here's the thing. If Kansas City gets up to 30 to nothing, yeah. I see someone else coming in to play quarterback. I don't see the Chiefs potentially getting Patrick Mahomes hurt if they don't need to. Correct. So, that would probably stay at around 30. I think they could do 50 and 51. I think that that... I can see it happen. Don't get me wrong, but I but I honestly feel the Colts haven't done shit. What have they scored? Seventeen points over two weeks. Uh, yeah, that wouldn't be enough to do it. They would fall just shy, wouldn't they? Yeah, I should probably take the under on that. So I, we have I, ju- I just can't take that over because I I can't guarantee that Indianapolis will put up twenty points. True, especially uh, after they what they lost to the Jags. Yeah, but let me see some player props here. There's some uh, pre-built. So what do we got? Mahomes and Ryan combined for 560. Eh. I could definitely see that happening. Yeah, if Ryan shows up, I can see Mahomes doing 300 plus today for sure. Yeah. What else do we got? Unless Mahomes passes for the whole 560 see, himself. This is the thing with being a Chiefs fan and betting on the Chiefs is I want everyone to score, and there's a very good possibility. I remember once like six people scored in a game, but. Yeah. It's just annoying because I don't want to, like, Clyde Edward, Alaire, 50 rushing yards, and to score a touchdown. Good odds of that. That but, could happen. But then they'll, like, hand it off to someone new. Just because, yep. just you know, no one gives a shit about my gambling. But, I mean, uh, I know their tight end, uh, Kelsey, is for <laughs> sure going to score. That's, that happens well, and that's damn near the every thing. game. The way that I used to gamble on Kelsey was it was yeah. every other game. Like you said, it was like, he'll one game, Kelsey the next. Kill one game, Kelsey the next. So yep. you, you could always guarantee it. But, like, if anybody does score for the Colts, I do feel it's going to be Jonathan Taylor. I do feel yep. that Jonathan Taylor can put up 90 yards. But who knows? Maybe my defense shows up today. But I the, I, I'm, I'm, the, I don't know who the Colts are yet. I'm pretty sure I know that they're, they're, they're uh, a dumpster fire. But I yeah. need that third-week confirmation. But uh, this one... If I was Jonathan betting, Taylor I would take money line. I would take the Chiefs uh, to cover the spread. I don't see there being 50 points scored in this one, though. No. No, I can't. So, for both of us, I have covered both. Not going under for the over-under. 
Now, this is going to be a game I haven't even seen the over of, but I'm pretty sure it's going to go over. We've got the Bills at the Dolphins. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's going to go over for sure. <laughs> that um, over-under better be set at about 70. Uh, let's see. They got Buffalo winning by four. I don't know what the over-under is. They're not telling me, but they definitely have Buffalo winning by four. Four and a half, I believe. Fifty-three and a half. Uh, I'm not sure on that one. Unless it's a complete and utter shootout, I don't think they're going to go over. Uh, well, uh, who's that? Was it Micah Hyde, I think, is out for the season I th- with a neck injury? All I know is one of their safeties is out. Um, I can see Miami putting up points today. I can see that this is going to be the game that the Bills lose. Um... I know they're favored by four. Fuck it. Yeah. Miami Miami came through for me last week. I'm going Dolphins. I'm going Dolphins to cover. And at 53 and a half, I'm hitting the over. I think this is going to be a 60-point game. I'm uh, I am going to be the contrarian today. I gotcha. Um, I'm going to – it's hard for me to choose that even though I'm a <laughs> Dallas fan and I'm sitting in Is your wife country. holding a knife beside you? Yeah, it's just, no. No. No, she's not. <laughs> My wife is upstairs sleeping. But I got, I'm got. i going to have to have the Bills cover. But for some reason, I don't. You said it was 50 and a half? 53 and a half. 53 and a half points. I also don't think the over is going to happen. So, of course, okay. he has uh, Dolphins to cover. This, this is the part in the series where me and Zeno start disagreeing with each other. Our friendship, <laughs> our friendship will Only be just... By week Only six, our friendship game. will be... We're going to have to bring Canadian in to be our buffer. <laughs> this is where it starts. All right. NFC North time. We've got the Lions visiting the Vikings. Both teams are one and one. I don't know how I feel about this game. This is a game that I want to shy away from betting on. I know the Vikings yeah. are the heavy favorites, but Kirk Cousins. Who knows, man? <laughs> you know, like... Who freaking knows, man? The Lions will win and then just start yelling, do you like that at Kirk Cousins? <laughs> I don't know on this one. I would this love, one's... I would literally e-transfer like Dan Campbell's office, $20. If Dan Campbell just went up to him, walked up, you like that? And then just walk <laughs> the fuck away. I would fucking love that. Nothing would make me happier. Uh, but this one, I don't know. I know the Vikings are a heavy favorite. I think the lines keep it close. Yeah. I think Swift, uh, I think Swift Vikings is back are... this week too. So I think they're going to have a running game. Uh, the Vikings, I don't know what the Vikings are. I really don't. I know they're an offense. I haven't I haven't seen enough from their defense. I think that, uh, I think, fuck. It looks like in every aspect the Lions are better. On paper, the they, they probably On are. On paper, they're better than everything the Vikings have except for a passing game. But this, the, 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 the Lions are the, the Lions for a reason. Like, there's people that know shit, but... That's true. I, I really want to take the Vikings here. I really do. I really, really do. I know I should. But I don't know. After what I saw last week, I don't know. <coughs> I'll take the Vikings. <coughs> Lions to cover. And what's our... Sp- and total points, 51 and a half. <coughs> I'm not touching the the, uh, the over under on that. No. <laughs> What's uh, what, what was the spread again? I'm sorry. I uh, your uh, total spread is six uh-huh. and a half for the Vikings. Six and, and a half. And I your total points is fifty one and a half. All right, I'm gonna take the Lions to cover with you, but I'm gonna take the under on the fifty one and a half. Yeah. said you were taking the over? I'm not touching the over-under on that one. Okay. Corgi no-go. Corgi no-go. Corgi no-like. Corgi no-like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we're going on to the Ravens at the Patriots. Both teams are one and one. Uh, let's see what we got. I think the Ravens can take this one. See, this is one of those stupid games, though. Like, does you Bill Belichick mind fuck Lamar Jackson all day today? Like, yeah. 
I don't think it's going to happen. Ravens by two and a half. I think they can cover that. Yeah, I would take the Ravens. I'd take the Ravens Ravens. to cover. Um, Total points, 44 and a half. I'd go over on that. Oh, yeah. To cover both for over 44. You said 44 and a half? Yes. Okay, got that. Yeah, I think I think they can. I think the Ravens can take this because the uh, Patriots are kind of like, eh. They can still do that. I don't think the Patriots are out of it. I just don't think they have their rhythm yet. Yeah, they don't. They definitely. It's like once Tom Brady left, they just lost that that it. You know what I'm saying? They lost like, that they, discipline. I think Mac Jones will be yeah. the guy. I just think it's gonna be the next year, year after. And I think yeah, that yeah. that division is is no longer so shitty that they are exposed a lot quicker. Because you used to be yeah. able to lock up, what, six games in that division, no problem. Like, yeah. You just had to you, win ten games to make the playoffs. And now you got Buffalo, you got freaking Miami, and they're coming chopping at the bit trying to get Super Bowls out of this. You got even the Jets, they're not as bad as I thought they were going to be. So it's like, Patriots, man, now you have to actually compete. Yeah, there is no, all right, we got, the, like you said, there is no, we got these six games here, and we're going to go to the playoffs and just rock shit. That doesn't exist for them anymore. So it's, yeah, I think the Ravens will cover, and you're probably right. Patriots won't be right until the following year. Yeah, I think it's going to be a while. I think, I don't think they make it to the playoffs this year. If they do, nope. it'll be on a very narrow wild card. Uh, but who knows? There's a lot of time in the season. Shit happens. People get hurt. But uh, continuing on and segueing into the AFC East again, we have the Jets hosting the Bengals. The Bengals are being the Bungles. They are 0-2. The Jets are 1-1. Joe Flacco is still at the helm. Um, Every time the Jets got a guy named Joe, they seem to do pretty well. (laughs) Yeah, for real, right? But here's what I'm going to say on this, right? Um, based on what I saw at the end of the Cowboys game, based on what I saw at the end of the Cowboys game, it seemed like Joe Burrow was having, at the beginning of the game, probably for the last week too, was having problems with his offensive line, mainly because he probably wasn't practicing or doing any kind of preseason work with them being out with, what was it, a, uh, what's her Appendix, I think. Appendix. He had his appendix burst or whatever, and he had to have surgery. So he was out. He didn't get any practice with them. It seemed to me at the end of the Cowboys game that Joe Burrow was actually starting to click with his offensive line a little bit. That's what scared me. So I'm like, I don't think the Jets are going to win this, and I don't think they're going to cover either. I think Joe Burrow is starting to click with his offense, and I think shit's about to start getting dangerous with the with the Bengals. Is Joe bringing the Burr back? Uh, is he? I don't Did know. Did he get hurt? Well, I don't know. We're going to see. I don't know. Something's wrong there. But uh, they've, they've been having offensive line problems. Um, I, I don't know if it's a practicing issue. Um, this was a problem they had last year. So <clears throat> I think that I can't see them going 0-3, uh, especially to the Jets. No. Like, no. don't get me wrong. Um, I just, they've got too many weapons. I don't think the Jets are going to be able to contain Jabbar Chase. As long as they get a three-second jump, on that defensive yeah. line, I think they're okay. Um, the one thing that worries me, though, is the point spread. Six and a half points for the Bengals. I can definitely see them winning by 14, but I can also yeah. see this being a field goal game. Um, after last week, uh, I am horrified to give them any more than three points in my in, in my book. Um, I, but I would take the Bengals. I would take the Jets to cover. And what do we got for points? 45 and a half. <clears throat> I don't know about that. Uh, right now, based on what they're, what FanDuel is predicting the score to be, it'd be 45 on the notes. So they wouldn't get that half. I'd still go under, yeah. I would go under. Yeah. So I agree with you taking the Jets to cover, actually, now that you said that. But I'm going to go, we're both go under for the 45 and a half, right? Yeah. Okay. Both under 45 and one half. Okay. Got it. All right, now we'll move on. What do we got? Las Vegas. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. That's how much I hate that game. Holy Vegas fuck. Vegas One, I don't know who's going to win this. They're, 
I think the I think the Raiders will and I'll as I predicted that game last week because I have watched the Raiders lose enough. My best friend is a Raiders fan. Um, yeah, yeah. I am a Chiefs fan. The fact that we are friends is fucking amazing. Uh, but that's it. But we've but I've seen enough of their games to know what they do. I think the Ra- the the Raiders will win this one. Um, I don't know what the fuck is going on in Tennessee. Um, they just lost Taylor Lewan for the season. Uh, oh, that no. is their left tackle. Um, this is up to Derek. Derek Henry is going to be blocking. I can't. I just. I can't I mean, bet on the Titans right now. I can't bet on the Titans. If Henry's going to be blocking most of the game, then he can't do what he normally does, which is run people over. So it's like. And Vegas has do? a really strong front line. Like they yeah. have. Uh, the, you know, there there's quite a few, like. You got Max or uh, who's a Max Cros or yeah Crosby, um, fuck I can't think of the other guy's name, and I'm not going to. But we'll move on. Raiders are loaded on defense though, um, but yeah I would take the Raiders. I would take the Raiders a point and a half. I'd give that to the Raiders, um, and we're talking a total of forty five and a half. I'm going under, and I'm gonna take uh, Raiders money line and Raiders to cover the spread. I'm going to go with you on that because I haven't watched enough of the Raiders or Tennessee really to know enough about this game. All I remember is the Raiders losing to the Cardinals in overtime. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's they good, they, they top out at a certain point, but yeah, I can't no, see the yeah. Titans putting up enough points today. Gotcha, gotcha. All right. Now here's one that should make you happy. The Eagles versus the Commanders. Um... <sighs> Yeah, I, 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 I think that barring even... Well, do, don't they still have Minshew behind in the bench? So even I if Jalen Hurts gets... Or Jalen Hurts got hurt, uh, I could still see uh, the Eagles pulling this shit off. Uh, Darius and, Slay has been a monster in that backfield. Yes. Absolutely. But I will monster. say this, though. They're not... I don't expect them to cover the spread. No. I just saw that why. number. <laughs> Every game in this division, for some reason, unless it's like a, it's either a wild blowout or it's a really close game. So I don't see it. We haven't had too many wild blowouts in this division lately. So I don't really see six and a half points being covered by the losing team. I don't see that. I don't see Washington taking six and a half points. No, I agree with you completely. I would yeah. take the money line. I think, uh, fuck, yeah, I, I, the commanders cover this. Uh, I can't see it being anything crazy. Over under yeah. 47 and a half. That, that I can see happening. Yeah, they like, uh, fuck, it's always your division too that'll put up like 70 fucking points in a game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can, I, I'd hit the over. I would lightly tap the over. I don't want to be overly committed to it, but I would tap the over on that one. Four. Over. Got it. All right. I got them all written down here in numbered order. <laughs> Just like and, hell. And that was our first slate of NFL games. Uh, the next games here start at, well, I'm in central time zone, so these are our 3 o'clock games. Yep. Oh, fuck. And the Jaguars at the Chargers. I'm going with the Chargers. I'm probably going to take this one. Are you going um, with the Chargers based on Herbert playing? Because that is still a game time decision. That's right. That's right. I forgot he fractured his rib cartilage, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, shit. And he uh, was debating this morning whether or not to take the shot. So who's their backup, if you don't mind me asking? Chase Daniel, who was my backup in Kansas City for a very long time. Uh, he was Drew Brees' backup in uh, New Orleans for a couple of years. He is a solid backup. Um, yeah. Actually, Doug Peterson was his coach in Kansas City as well. Uh, but yeah, he's a solid backup. Do I... Th- I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about that one. I don't like that one. That one, that one makes me hurt. I just want to take a look at the... Uh, if there's any updates on um, on Herbert, huh? But that one because that's the it's it's a different game if we pull Herbert out. Yeah, 
Yeah, hold on, let me, let me come over to, to um, double check as well. Sorry. Okay, I so Herbert I... is pushing to play. Could take the pain killing injection. For those of you who did not pay attention to our conversation about Tyrod Taylor last week, um, yeah, they punctured his lung last time this happened. He is now suing uh, the medical staff for the Chargers. Uh, if I was Justin Herbert, I'd be like, dude. Like, is it really worth it? But here's the problem with my division. Um, the AFC West is supposed to be the tough division this year. Um, yeah. You know, but with the, Ra or with the Raiders and the Broncos kind of shit in the bed so far. And the Broncos have squeezed by. Last week was a squeeze by. I don't think they deserve that one last week. Um, they squeezed by. Um, I don't know. I don't think the Chargers can afford to lose any games. This isn't a divisional game. Like, if there was a game that they could afford to lose and rest Herbert, this would be the game. But whether yeah. or not Herbert wants to sit is a totally different discussion. Uh, but you know what? I think Herbert plays. Uh, I think they... Even they with Chase you. Daniel, I yeah. think they can do it. So They're, I'm still going with the Chargers. Yeah, I'd go with the Chargers. Um, Chargers cover 42 and a half. You think they can do it? You think the over can go that? I think I can go over on that. Okay, 42 and a half over. And here's the thing. like, If Herbert does decide to play with the pain-killing injections and they don't puncture his lung, um, I, even without the pain-killing injections... Last week, I saw him back with all that pain and just throw a fucking 40-yard dime. Yeah, but the throw before <laughs> that 40-yard dime was the scariest thing I had ever seen. Uh, That's true. Like, you don't want the guy... Like, what is the point of beating the shit out of your quarterback in week three? That's There is no point, especially if you're trying to make the playoffs. There's really no point. Like, I hope they don't Robert Griffin him. Like, I really hope they don't. And this is what I'm worried about with Dak as well, because uh, they were talking about it on McAfee on Friday that uh, I guess Jerry Jones had made some comments to try to, and it kind of sounded like he was rushing Dak yeah. back. <clears throat> and that's kind of what I I'm worried about. I think that uh, Jerry Jones is an old style of football. He was like Mike Shanahan with the RG3 thing. Uh, yeah. This is, I don't know, uh, Dak. I don't know. I think he'll be there. I think Zeke's gone this year for sure. Unless Zeke pulls yeah. out like a string of hundred yard games and touchdowns, I don't see Zeke uh, staying. Zeke to the Ravens. I think that might happen, but I don't really know what's going on with Zeke right now. Like, what's happening, man? Like, once he got that contract, like, everything just shut down. That's what happens a lot, and that's why these guys don't want to get contracts. They don't want to give them to running backs because, like I said, somewhere deep in the bowels of Texas, there is a warehouse full of running backs in yeah. which they have forklifts that go and they pick them out like Amazon orders. And that's <laughs> it. They send them out to Georgia Tech. They send yeah. them to, you know, they're going everywhere. They're going to Bama. They're going everywhere. But, uh, but that's just it, like... It's your job to lose in the NFL. Yeah. Like, your job is to win, and if you're not winning, fuck. You better be fucking getting your resume ready. But I haven't yeah. seen I haven't seen Zeke of old uh, in probably about two years now. Um, yeah. It's been wild, dude. Pollard's been going nuts. Like, I don't understand it. I don't know what happened. So. And the thing is, I've had, I've had great running backs with mediocre offensive lines too. You guys spent a lot on your offensive line. This yeah. wasn't a cheap offensive line. That was what, six years of first round picks? Like, yeah. you know, there was a lot of capital put into that. But we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I don't know. I hope Dak, uh, I don't know. I, I There's going to be some changes. I don't think you guys should have gotten rid of Amari Am Am Cooper, to be honest with you. I know he was. I agree with you 100%. I, I think you needed him. He he drew a lot of attention off the ball. But, I think um, they're starting to realize that now. But you guys like, got Micah, right now. But you turned him into Micah Parsons, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of yeah, got to take the good with the bad. But I, I think if Jerry wanted that pick, he would have gotten that pick, anyways. 
But we'll move on to our second game of the afternoon slate. We have NFC East, the Rams at the Cardinals. Uh, this is going to be a fucking 70-point game. Yep. And it's a three-and-a-half point spread. Hang on, I gotta so, go. And that's the problem, and this is the fucking thing with the Cardinals. Because this is what I thought know. the Card- I thought what the Cardinals did last week was the shit they were going to pull on Kansas City. I, th- I was waiting for it. I was waiting for them to come back, put up, you know, 40 points in a quarter. <clears throat> Just yeah. an absolute miracle on ice shit. But, yeah. but you yeah. know, you know, they saved Timmy. Timmy's no longer paralyzed. You know, Kyler Murley gets, or Ky- yeah, he got slapped in the face at the end by a fan. He comes he out. He did, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it? Did they file a lawsuit on that? that I, I don't think he, he wanted to, but I don't I think the NFL did. I don't know. But okay. I know he said that he forgave him and you know. But I don't know if it was intentional. I didn't see the video, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speak to it. Uh, uh, it was intentional, my guy. Was that it? Guy was it straight it. up? Yeah, okay. it for sure was intentional. Okay, I well, saw the video on that one. I'm like, uh, uh yeah, he he came from the second row. Oh, this was a walk because the way that the picture looked it looked like yeah. he was just walking through the tunnel and some guy's hand happened to hit him. So No, no. Okay. He walked up to the wall to show like Cardinals fans some love and this Raiders fan from the second row just came with the like fly fishing throw hand down and smacked him in the face. Yeah, well, fuck Like that, that shit was intentional. It's okay. Car- Kyler sent out some of his Call of Duty friends to go fucking pay him a visit. <laughs> Yo, okay. So in saying that now, that was one of those things that I brought up to my wife while I was watching the game. Um, I was like, all right, now watch watch Kyler Murray's performance when this new Call of Duty drops. Watch what happens. He's probably still going to run around and do schoolyard bullshit, but his team has been bitching that he hasn't been relearning the playbooks or studying team tape because he's too busy playing Call of Duty. Right. That's what happens. And he openly said it. He was like, hey, when Call of Duty comes out, nothing else matters. I go hard on Call of Duty. I show up to my practice. I show up to games and I murder it. But Call of Duty is what I'm doing at my off time. I was like, oh boy, dude, you didn't want to say that. That's Your contracts are going to suffer. Well, <laughs> Apparently they haven't. But, you know. I don't know. I, I don't think pissing the kid off is a be- better way to get the you know the best out of him. But no. uh, give me two seconds here so you know what I just need to grab something to drink real quick. Yep, I'm going to do the same thing. Thank you for the break. On one second. You know what? I'm going with the line on this one. I'm going to take the Rams. I'm going to take the Rams to cover. I think I might, just because I don't know enough. Like I said, I haven't watched enough of these teams. I'm 48 and a half them. points. You're over under. 41 and a half? 48 and a half. It's showing that they can cover it, but I don't know if they can. I think they do. For- I'm going over on that. Well, 
Yep. essentially what's going to end up happening to Frank. Frank's either going to get so fat that he is just going to get to a point. And he can't stop him. Like, we literally... Lady Dragon had to put, uh, you know, a latch lock on the door that we keep the garbage behind because uh -huh. he has now figured out how to open the door because if he keeps hitting it hard enough, it'll eventually pop back the other way. So we, cut, we could leave for 20 minutes and that dog will be in the garbage. Like, it is... Uh -huh. Absolutely insane, and and it's not like he isn't fed. Like he's very well fed, but yeah, yeah he is. He's a natural, uh, a natural floor shark. But the thing is, I've always had shepherds and Dobermans myself, and I'm I've never. They're not garbage dogs. Like they won't go and like you can train them not to. I have never been able not to train a dog. This corgi has a mind of its own. All my dogs have yep. run on treadmills. This corgi just tells me to fuck off. Yeah, and that's, that's it. how it is with my Yorkie. Oh, Same deal. Fuck. Yeah, just I don't know. Care. And Lady Dragon, uh, eh? She's she's the same. They're like water. They kind of just do what they want, but yeah, they make me happy. So we'll keep going. Oh, speaking Hell of which, yeah. looks like both their ears were burning. The corgi just ran in thinking there was food, and he's covered <laughs> in mud. What are you doing, Frank? Mommy must be home. But we'll move on. To uh, where are we? Oh, Falcon Seahawks. Okay, so this is where I think the Falcons will actually pull off their first win. Right here. It's a one point spread. They have the Seahawks hey, winning by two yeah. points, but I feel like the way the Falcons have been fighting, that they'll actually pull this one off. I think the Falcons got this too. I'm, uh, and yeah. it's not just because I have uh, Cordero Patterson on uh, my fantasy team. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I, I don't, like I said, I don't think the Falcons are a bad team. They put up, what, 27 28 against the Rams last week. That's yeah. an impressive feat. Granted, a lot of it was in garbage time. But Still, uh, one and count. a half points, yeah, I can see that. I think, I think they can pull this one off. This is where I think. So I'm taking Falcons to win. You said you're doing the same? Yeah, I'll take the Falcons to win, Falcons to cover. And we got 43 and a half points on an over-under. I think they'll go over. If they're able to I'm going to disagree. I'm, I, I, I'm going to go under on this one. Okay. 43 and a half? Yep. Or ye under. Me over. Oh, dude, these trolley bright crawlers are so fun. Dude, you're going to be to a point, and the problem with me too is I check the weather during the week. So I like oh, to know okay. where it's going to rain, are we going to be kicking, are we going to be raining. This week seems to be pretty good, but some of my betting apps are pretty good and that they let me know next to the odds what the weather is going to be. Because that's yeah. the other thing you got to take into, and that's the thing, I guess as a Cowboys fan, you're so spoiled being in Jerry yeah, Dome that uh, you don't worry about wind and snow and sleet. But look what happened yeah. to the 49ers in week one without the yeah. rain. I actually think without the rain in the Seattle game, Trey Lance might still be playing football this season. So there, there's a lot of things to be said that the weather can can change in a game. Wind, 
every like remember that what was it was it the Bills Patriots last year that was in the snow and then the fucking Patriots like it, it was like a three to seven game or some shit like it was absolutely yeah. nuts because they couldn't get a throw off. But uh, but yeah no the 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 Falcon Seahawks. I like that one. I don't think it's going to be a huge scoring game, but I think the Falcons pull off 28 points. I, you know what, man? I'm going to go 28-14. I'm just going to be 42 points. I can't I can't commit to 43 and a half. Okay. I can see that. So, let's see. What we got? Yeah, you went under for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I got you. Yeah, the Seahawks are the favorite, but yeah, I would take I would take I'm taking the Falcons on this one, man. I yeah. just, for some reason, I'm like, dude, I've seen them fight too hard for the last two weeks to lose a third game in a row. Like, I and they're better on paper for in every aspect. Well, like, they I, got the Seahawks. The problem is when you have people like DK Metcalf, like, you, it's a you, game you can change it, right? Like, that's it. If you yeah. want to do end arounds, you can do end arounds. But, uh, but, yeah, but that one, it's probably not a game I'll watch, but... I think it'll be a good game. Now, here is my intriguing game of the week. The Packers at the Buccaneers. Uh, Tampa Bay is favored because Tampa Bay is Tampa Bay. And that's all Tom does is fucking win with, at life so and everything. one and a half point spread? Yep. Holy shit. But I can't remember. Like they, they... I want to check this uh, the injury report here real quick because yeah, I yeah. think this is a ridiculous... Uh, there is no receivers in this game. Like I said, I think Cole Beasley is going to be starting uh, from so what I heard from uh, Ian Rappaport. So let's so it's take pretty much going to be a, a run-dominated game then. But who's got the better runners? I would have to say it's probably Tampa. No? Is it? No. It isn't. It isn't they got Tampa. Leonard Fournette, don't get me wrong, but they... But uh, Rojo plays for the Chiefs now. That's right. That's right. Yeah, so Packers have the better running game. Yeah, because you, got, got, you got A.J. Dillon and Aaron Jones. <laughs> like, yeah. that is uh, that is an absolute... Okay, so here we go. So the injuries for the Packers. Sammy yeah. Watkins is out. Uh, oh, Marquez shocker. Lewis uh, is going to be questionable. Uh, Randall Cobb is questionable. Uh, uh-huh. Watson is questionable, so they they have four receivers questionable or out. Back to Ari is questionable, but I heard he was going to be in. Uh, Mason Crosby seems to be coming back in, and the Bucks are out. Uh, their quarterback is out. Akeem Hicks is out. Russell Gage is questionable. Julio Jones is questionable. Rashad Perryman. Wow. So all their receivers are questionable. Um, their tackle... Uh, Smith is out. Fournette is even questionable. Wow. Godwin is out. Packers, oh, Fuck, Packers I think the Packers are going to upset today. I think the Packers yeah, can upset today. I'm going with them. I'm going with the Packers to win. So let, let's Dano check this out real quick here. So Packers, if Packers win, Packers cover. Uh-huh. And what do we got? 42 and a half points. I can see the over... Oh, is it gonna let me? Oh, it's not gonna let me bet on all three. I'm gonna have to build another ticket. But uh, yeah, I would take I Packers game. I I take Packers across the board here. I, I think just want to say a, uh, I'm sorry for the noise in the background. No, no you problem. Can hear it. There's a house up the street from mine that just burned down. So it's like there, there is a there's a lot of firefighters out here right now, and I'm getting texts from fire. Uh, my friends that are firefighters freaking out because they saw it was my street and they thought it was my house. So oh, my phone fuck. is blowing up right now. So I apologize hey, for no, that. No problem, man. I'm glad you're safe. Uh, huh? Oh, I'm good. You, you are very yeah. laissez-faire about that information. We're just here chatting about football. <laughs> just, I just wanted to let you know in case you hear any information, my mic seems to pick up everything in the surrounding area. Yeah. So it's like if you hear sirens and you hear people freaking out, it's because a house burned down. So. No problem at all, pal. I didn't hear much. I got the, the, yeah. the tank behind me anyways. But oh, all right, so I think the Packers, fuck, and I'm doing it again. I'm betting against Tom Brady. You're betting against Tom Brady. At this but time next week, we're going to have a conversation not, about why I just, shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> but it's not just Tom Brady, though. That's the thing. We're, we're taking this as a whole. Neither team has received. One team has a better running game, but who has the better defense? 
that's my question. And that's the, the thing, because I think the Bucks' defense is better than the Packers' defense. Especially in the running area, and, the, and as far as like running, they're solid. Run defense. I think just the bu- I just think the Bucks are solid all around on defense. Okay. I don't think there's many many kinks to that chain. So that explains why it's a one and a half point spread, then. Yeah. Mm. But I can definitely see it. That might be the game to watch. I think this is going to be a field goal. Uh, I just think Packers have the better kicker. Mason Crosby's been doing it and doing it well for a very long time. Lady Dragon, welcome in. Thank you so much for coming in here. Thank you so much for coming. Welcome, Lady Dragon. What up? I have slowly been chipping away at the old stock of Halloween candy that we're never going to give out, so we have room for the new candy. (laughs) Just so you know. We you might be a little lighter on you, arrow bars today. Do you, what up? Do you give out full bars, or is it like the, the, the candy pack? Just like the little the, ones. We uh, Lady Dragon you, usually uh, makes some magic. She puts a couple together, but so we, we, we live get, in a smaller town. so We don't get uh, trick-or-treaters at my house anymore for the main reason that I used to have a pit bull that was just terrifying to the neighborhood, even though she was a complete sweetheart and would never hurt anybody. She just looked intimidating. Well, so, like, I would come to the door with her, and kids would freak out. Well, that was so the thing. When I lived in, yeah. uh, I used to live in Winnipeg before I moved out uh, with Lady Dragon. But uh, I used to have uh, German Shepherds and, and Dobermans. But I came from yeah. a very heavily Filipino community. <laughs> and, yeah. they, and they were used to refer to my dogs as the devil dogs. So they would literally yeah. cross the street. So rarely yeah. did their children come over for, for trick-or-treating. But I used to go and I'd drop off a couple candies at the neighbor's house because they always had, you know, a bunch of grandkids over. And I know they were scared to come over, but yeah, it's I, I've yeah. never had that problem. But here, yeah, everybody's got a dog and everybody's got a kid. But uh, I don't think we even, I don't think we got rid of all of our candy last year even. Uh, we didn't either. I got like a drawer full of it I got to do something with. But that is like my, my, my 10-day celebratory week because my birthday is October 21st. Oh, fuck. So I celebrate my birthday, which I think we're going out for hibachi dinner and haunted hay rides. Oh, yeah. And then throughout the week, I'm consistently buying candy, and then Halloween happens, and since nobody comes to my house, we have all this candy, <laughs> I sit in my back room, and I turn all the lights out, and I play horror video games, or I watch horror movies, and I just stuff my face full of Halloween candy. That's what it's been like for the last five years. But like Halloween just leads into diabetes in November, eh? Like Pretty yeah. much. So, yeah, I, I remember that now, Lady Dragon. We did run out and you were giving out Cokes. I remember that because she was... Because oh. then this brings us back to Lady Dragon's love of Cokes because I remember she was having a bit of an anxiety attack about having to give the fucking kids <laughs> her Cokes. See? 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 And this is where your Coca-Cola sponsorship would come in very handy right there because Lady Dragon would not have to have an anxiety attack because you'd have an endless supply. Dude, you could have kegs. You could have a Coca-Cola kegerator in your freaking house, which would be dangerous, yes, but you'd be able to give out free Cokes to kids on, on Halloween. Coca-Cola, if you ever make a THC drink, it should be tested in this household. Oh. Uh, but here's the problem, Lady Dragon. I will say this before we before we finish whatever we're finishing. Do not give those cans of Coca-Colas to the wrong kids because you will have Coca-Cola-shaped holes in your fucking windows, especially in my neighborhood. <laughs> so it's like, I ain't giving out anything that can be thrown as a rock. Yeah, she doesn't come from a place... That they, they use bullets here that don't really need the Coke the cans, but yeah, like... When I was in the city, it was the same thing. You never give anything that could be used against you as a weapon. It's 100%. just hundred percent. But uh, she's not used to that city living. But uh, oh. <laughs> but yeah, no, I yeah. definitely know what you mean by that. Cause yeah, it, and it always snowed here on uh, on uh, on Halloween. But I remember, like, we used to freeze cans too, and before they would blow, we would use them as projectiles to throw shit. But that's what uh, we did with uh, pine cones. We'd pack pine cones full of mud and then pack snow around them and just. Them. Never did that, but I kind of wish I knew that because we got a lot of pine cones here. <laughs> so that was a bad C note back in the day. He'd be whipping them at school buses, uh, scaring the shit out of kids and drivers, which is terrible now that I think about it because an entire bus could have flipped and or hit somebody else. As <laughs> right? I was that. That so was it. don't do that, kids. Don't do that. Luckily, we have nothing but responsible viewers here at Angry Corgi Productions, and I want to thank everybody yeah. for coming in and hanging yes. out with myself and 
Carey from Sino TV. We are doing week three NFL picks uh, on the Puff Pass and Kick Sports Show. We will do other sports eventually, but right now we can barely handle fucking football. So we are going to keep going on with our picks. We are we are coming down to our Sunday nighter. We have the 49ers at the Broncos. Both teams are one and one. Jimmy G is back and Papa is cooking. Uh, he came in last week. The 49ers uh, took on the Seahawks last week and absolutely destroyed them. I don't know what the Broncos have, uh, but they have not won prettily the last game, and they lost to the Seahawks the first game. I'm taking the 49ers in this one. How do you feel about this one, Sino? I am uh, also taking the 49ers, and they will cover because it's a one, it's a point and a half spread. And I know Jimmy G is worth a few games, and he's not bad. I don't know why they didn't really rock with him. I guess I know why they didn't really rock with him, but they kept him around for good reason, obviously. And I feel like he can win this game for him. I feel like he can probably win at least half the games for him because, like you said, uh, starters out for the season, so he really doesn't have a choice. <laughs> so, yeah, I got San Fran for this one. All right, I'm going to take a look at the injury report here because something, for there to be a half-point spread in this, that... Something's weird. I've got a red flag here, so i got to check this out. Oh, so... Um, his, I believe, right guard is out... Uh, David Davis Price, the running back, is out. Uh, Tyler Croft, the tight end, is out. Eric Armstead is questionable. Both their tackles are questionable. Kittle is expected to play. Okay, good. And as far as the Broncos go, holy fuck. Broncos have like 20 people on questionable. Um, That's, yeah. So let's look at some notable names. Uh, Jerry Judy is questionable. <laughs> Hamler's questionable. Uh, Purcell is questionable. Randy Gregory should be playing, but um, fuck yeah, no, I'm. Th- apparently, there's something I'm missing, but yeah, I would go San Fran, San Fran to cover. Um, fuck, I'd even take San Fran to cover at four and a half. Um, yeah, and I'm taking the over. I would take it's forty five point over though. I'd go under. I don't think that the Broncos are gonna. Well, you know what? No, no, I'm going under. I can't go over on that. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm San gonna Fran's under. defense is too good. I don't think. I don't think Russell. I think Russell sautés today. I don't think Russell's frying anything. He ain't coming out cooking today. He's playing it safe. He's making instant fucking noodles today. Yeah, um, yeah I San Fran wins. Um, yeah. Broncos country ride. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, let's hide. Let's hide. Uh, that's gonna be the motto today. And then what do we got? Our big Monday nighter C note. Oh, I'm worried about this one actually. I would be too. The way that the Giants have been pulling out wins, um, you know, they've they've got more tricks than a magician's pocket, man. They've they're two and zero. They're making it happen. Um, what say you? Uh, you know what? I want to go with Giants. I really do. But I'm gonna stick with that hometown team. <laughs> that home team. I'm going to stick with the Cowboys. It is a one-point spread. The over-under is 39 points. But the Giants are the home team here, so you know what? Well, they are the home team, but I'm oh. sticking with... You're going to go Cowboys? I'm, st- I'm sticking Cowboys. Okay. For some reason, I got a little bit of hope, and I'm probably going to have it stomped out of me this week. And once that happens, then I will get back to dating... Uh, not dating. I'll get back to uh, betting not with my heart, but with my head, I guess is what they say. That, that was a man that just grew a little bit right there. Uh, <laughs> so, so, that, I will get back to it. Once this, if this week goes the way I think it's probably going to go, I'm going to I'm gonna bet against how I think it's going to go, just in pure hopes that it works out. All right, and that our defense can bail us out. But if that doesn't happen, just know and believe that for the rest of this season, I'm going, I'm going to go with not fandom. Uh, that way. All right. Well, I don't know if you've taken a look at the injury report there, so you know. I have not. Let's look at it. What do we got? Number two on the injury report there is Micah Parsons, questionable. Fuck me, dude. All right. Okay. I'm not done. No, there's more. <laughs> there's more pop. Uh, I don't know why Diggs is on there. It, it looks like he's playing. Uh, McGovern, your guard is out. Schultz is Shit. questionable. 
Curse is out. Gallop is questionable. Would you like to backpedal hard on your previous statements? If so, it is time for a mulligan and you're allowed to pull one. Okay, I'll take the mulligan because knowing <laughs> that now, there's no fucking way they're beating the Giants. That's not happening. All right, so I'm going to take the Giants. We're going to take that mulligan. All right, right. Mulligan. I'm going to agree with your mulligan. I hate to do it, um, but if Micah Parsons is not playing this game, uh, there is absolutely like no way, no, There's no way. There's no way. Unless I don't Russ see plays, Zeke. Like, the game of his fucking life. There's no way. Uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, until the Giants prove otherwise, I've got to go with the Giants, and that's a half point. I can take the Giants to cover that. I feel good. Oh yeah. Um, thirty-nine point. I don't know if Dallas can put up enough points to be able to help that cover. Giants might be able to. But I don't know. I don't know. Because our defense is good with Gallup, uh, Parsons in there. It's good. Uh, you know, even Van Der Esch. I don't know. Is he out, too? Because usually he's, he's... Actually, I didn't see him. That was the first time I think I've seen... If it wasn't him, it was always Sean Lee. But I think these yeah. are the first two times I haven't... No, he's not on the report at all. Wow. For the Okay, wow. That's rare. All right, so... Yeah, we're taking the Giants to cover... I'm going to go under on the 39 points unless somebody does some wild shit. Uh, but we do have Anthony Brown as a receiver. Ooh. Hang on here. This is where it gets and this is where it's starting to get a little a little cloudier here. I'm going to keep going on the Giants injury report here. Kevin yeah. Thibodeau is questionable and Leonard Williams is doubtful. And Leonard Williams was a big thing that I was relying on to say that Zeke wasn't going to run today. But yeah. Robinson is out, McLeod is out. Pollard. Their other defensive end is questionable. Eee. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know. I hate this. I hate this game. I hate betting on the Giants. I hate betting on the Cowboys. This game gives me anxiety. Um... I mean, we still have, uh, we, even with those people out, we still have a ton of weapons that we can use. And there's a new guy. Who knows what the new guys are going to do? Who knows? But I'm still going to take the Giants. Yeah. Even though I really don't want to, I'm still going to. I'm going to go under for the 39 points because I don't think either offense can score that much. Yeah, and I'll I'm pretty agree sure with the you. defense isn't coming up. I'm I don't not, see... not going to touch that over-under, though. Yeah, so, well, let's just leave that one alone then. So, over, under, no go. I won't even write it down. I'll just put both take the Giants to cover and win. All right, so let's build a ticket while I'm here. I uh -huh. may as well burn some cash. So, I'm going to start the, another uh, account was... here. So, I'll be starting an angry Corgi account. I'm going to try to get on with Vandal. I've got some uh, family in Ontario. So, I'm, I'm going to nice. reach out and, uh, and, uh, and do this. This is still for my last year's fucking money. I should probably use it. I don't know why, but uh, let's just see what I can get through here. What do I like? I've built a couple tickets, so let's see what I got open right now. So in the last seven days, I did uh, Chiefs to win, uh, or uh, Chiefs to cover, Eagles to cover, and Niners to cover. So I bet a buck on it, so 533 in return. Um yeah. I've got a four-game parlay. I have uh, Chiefs to win money line, Ravens money line, Eagles money line, and Niners money line. So let's uh, maybe let's do. Hmm. Let's see what we got for boosts. So on Betway.ca, uh, we get Betway boosts. So a lot of uh, you know FanDuel's got its own stuff, like, but everyone's uh, kind of juices their own odds. So let's take a look. At, yeah. uh, at, at a couple here and see not what's to, uh, on. Not to interrupt you real quick, but I do have a quick question sure. about the Canadian um, rules that you guys have as far as betting. Like, why are you guys not allowed to use certain betting sites? Or, like, is it just, like, a thing that Canada's just like, nah, fuck you guys? It, I, it's pretty, it's just regulated here, man. Like, every province is different. Um, I gotcha. Liquor and gambling kind of ties hand in hand here in Canada. So that's okay. it. Like even with weed, like weed is governed under the gaming commission, you know. Like, 
So do you guys have like an ABC for your liquor or like? We have, well, here in Manitoba, well, you've been to Ontario, like the L- LCBO. We have yep. liquor marts here in Manitoba. Um, everyone kind of has a different shit. Um, like okay. Alberta is a little more lax. Like you can go into a Costco and buy your vodka from Costco. Like yep. every, every province is really fucking different with it. But uh, yeah, it's, it, it's just more regulated. I think it's going to be open a lot more open now. Um, I like, gotcha. Now that FanDuel is in Ontario, once they see the money that it makes, we'll be on board. I consider Manitoba a tier two uh, province. They test it out in places like BC, uh, Quebec, and Ontario, and then it'll gotcha. move to you know the the prairies and, and, and then to the east coast. But yeah, it, it's not too bad here. It's just I can't go anywhere I want to go. Like, Betway's gotcha. good. I really like Betway. I've been using it for years. Uh, the other one is Cool Bets. But I don't... The the way that they do books here... Um, I don't know. Like I yeah. said, I've been doing it for... So I'm used to it. But it's... Uh, I, I'm hoping... If I were a better gambler, uh, I would probably go to the States. But it's my own damn fault. I can't go to the States. Uh, gotcha. So, you know, it is what it is. But that's, uh, that's kind of how it is here as far as like gambling as far as like alcohol and stuff like we can kind of just do whatever um like we have a place you might have heard of it like uh if you've ever been anywhere near rochester or buffalo new york a place called wegmans okay it's a grocery store yep. like you can buy wine you can buy beer there uh we still have liquor stores and whatnot so they don't really care the only thing is is like they won't let grocery stores sell hard liquor that you have to go to a liquor store for but as far as betting goes like outside of that like poker is a whole different ball game but as far as sports betting they don't give a shit you can do whatever here yeah like it's I know, wild i know here like i had a few buddies they used to actually go to the las vegas poker tournaments they yep. like them yep. better like you can go to the casino here but but you guys are playing which uh, with a much bigger pool of gamblers like that's the thing too uh, the prop bets weren't as big in Canada until about a year or two years ago. Like, uh, but like even now, like I'm I'm staring at this one right now, and Tyreek Hill, seventy five plus receiving yards and score a touchdown at the Bills. Right. Uh, I can see that happening because, like, dude, with Tyreek Hill, you can't stop him. You can only hope to slow him down. And if he is gonna score a touchdown, it's gonna be probably forty plus. Right? Yeah, so, 100%. So he can easily get that 75 in a TD unless the Bills are just lock, find a way to lock him down completely and only him. But then that leaves the rest of the offense open. So it's like, what are you going to do, you know? And that's the thing. But Miami's got, like, I've got Jalen Waddle in my fantasy uh, in my fantasy lineup. Oh, uh, here, we can yeah. go through my fantasy lineup right now. But uh, I am you, yeah. Mother Tucker. But, yeah, like. I'm going to hopefully have a pretty big day between, uh, I got Will, well, and this again is dependent on Herbert, but I've got Aaron Jones in. I think he's going to eat versus Tampa Bay. Uh, Waddle versus Buffalo. Uh, one of the receivers, one of the two receivers is going to do something today because with, I believe it was, I, I'm pretty sure it's Micah Hyde, uh, who sustained a really bad neck injury. He's going to be out for the season. Um, we is he gonna be both. okay, or is it like a? Uh, I think he's gonna like be okay, from... but I think it's okay. he's got to have some surgery. Um, okay. But yeah, so he should be back for next season, but he's definitely gonna be missing this season. Damn, dude! I thought it was gonna be like that guy from Pittsburgh that uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, uh, and um, not Ryan Shazier. Like, yeah, I was gonna say Bud Dupree. I don't know why, but wrong guy. Yeah. But yeah, Ryan Shazier. Yeah, that was horrible. That was shitty. I was actually watching that game, but yeah. it happens. Like, and that's the shitty thing. Um, it, like Ricky, or what is it? There was a guy in Seattle. Remember, it was I think it was the other locket. They had two, I think. But uh, uh, Ricardo, the guy, not Ricardo Locket. Was it? Was it Ricardo? Yeah, Lockett? it was Ricardo Locket. Yeah. Well, uh, he got hit by. Um, it was either Sean Lee or somebody. He got cracked. Yeah. And his it was over. It was over for him. And I felt terrible about that. And I'm like, dude, I didn't even do it, and I felt shitty. So I'm glad to hear he's gonna be okay. Yeah, he might be out for the season, but that's better than not being able to walk around right for the rest of your life you know and that's it like there's there's a couple things that um it's shit that happens you try to do your best to not have it happen but it happens uh but let's take a look at a club let's do a flyer here uh what do i got i've already got 
Actually, that's not bad. Bills, Chiefs, and e or Eagles, Vikings. Oh, I don't like the Vikings on that ticket. Um, I really don't. I don't know, because this is the thing. Debo Samuel, 60-plus receiving yards, to score a touchdown at Denver. I can definitely see that better. Uh, it's the same payout as Tyreek Hill. Yep. You know what? Let's toss a couple bucks on that. I can see eventually, that happening. Eventually, I'm going to have enough balls to do this. You know what, man? <laughs> I and that's why. Like, like... Once you get used to it, the thing is, it, 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 I don't win at all, but like, <laughs> and this is a horrible way to look at it. I used to be an addict and I don't do drugs anymore. So the yeah, money, yeah. I like, ha this is still a fraction of the money that I used to burn on a Friday night going out. So, yeah. but like, I, I limit myself to about 20 bucks a week but I generally win I win a lot of that back like I break pretty close to even but I don't go it's very for me to go in on a $10 ticket like I would have to feel very confident on that $10 I haven't I've won but uh, I like uh, you know Canada we got toonies here I like to throw a couple toonies around and see what comes back ah uh, the yeah, yeah. fuck we were about to buy a 12 foot fucking skeleton yesterday for about 500 fucking dollars this is too I saw that post this and I was like, dude, it still get might it, happen soon. If I can win enough, but then this is the thing. If I win enough $2 bets, it eases the fate of the fucking 12 foot skeleton. But uh, next That's weekend, we might true. be betting macaronis. We'll see how it goes. Because uh, <laughs> that's the thing, because I used to bet baseball thing. too, but I don't watch baseball enough. Like, and that's so, but I don't know. Hockey's always good to bet on. Uh, yeah. But with football, because it's played once a week, I've got enough time. It's like it's like horse racing. I used to like horse racing because I had enough time to fucking make a decision about horsing. But this, I can tell like everybody's injury, what everything is, the weather, uh, yeah. you know, and, and you have a week to kind of see what's going on with everybody. But let's see if there's any other boosts that I like here. Uh, Allen and Tua to combine for 550 plus yards. I can see that happening. I don't. Yeah, I can, but I can see I injuries can see that. too. That's that's Allen the thing. Allen is definitely going to get at least half of that, and I'm pretty sure Tua is going to put up a gigantic amount as well. So, so I can actually, see that let's happen. take a look at those overs again, and we'll get going here. The Chiefs play in about 20 minutes, and I got to find a snack. Um, oh, all good, all good, all good. Um, let's go. Let's let's bring up Miami and the Bills. What time is that game, if you don't mind me asking? Um, 12 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. So it would be 1 o'clock here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so okay, about 30 minutes. Hour, okay. 20 minutes. All right, so. What time is the count? What did I say? I was going to take the Dolphins because I feel confident. Yeah, you did say that. Let's go back. Hold on. Let's see Let's what we got for pre-built bets here. Uh, you have the Dolphins to cover. And you're taking the over. What was... Oh, fuck. I gotta go check the over. I didn't write that down on this one. I, hang on. I got it. I I 54 I and a half. That. Okay, so let's make an over ticket. Let's make an over ticket. Let's go to I my... Write that down. Let's go to my total points. Oh, they're changing as we speak now. Uh, the over has changed? On a few games here. Nothing overly important. Uh, the, uh, okay. the Chiefs are at 51 and a half points now. Uh, Saints are down to 40 and a half. Uh, Texans Bears is down to 39 and a half. Ravens wow. New England Rave uh, they're up to 45 and a half. And um, Rams Cardinals is down to 48 and a half. But we'll stick with what we got. Okay. We can get my mom. Yeah, we can bring in Lady Dragon's mom. Uh, Mama Dragon. That is actually a good name for her. Um, yeah, she can spit some fire. That's for sure. But, uh, but yeah, we'll Mama Dragon in. knows about football. She knows about baseball. She knows quite a bit. She's a big Blue Jays fan. But Let's she's, go. Uh, but yeah, Hell she's, yeah. But that's it. Like I should be a Blue Jays fan, but for whatever reason I'm not. But let's do a points here. So what we're talking about? We were talking about our uh, our Ravens. Why can't I find this fucking game now? Oh, here we go. Bills Ravens fifty four and a half over. I am gonna go. What other over do I like? Or even an under. I think uh, the Chiefs Colts are going to be under, right? That's what I took? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a damn pick. Uh, 48 and a half Rams Cardinals, I went over. Uh, Rams Cardinals to cover and over, yeah. 48 and a half, we 
Mr. Sick Gaming, thank you so much for the phone. Welcome into Angry Project Productions. I am doing this for Super Smash Bros. from CNN TV. Thank you for coming in. How you doing? How you living? And thank you again for joining us. Alright, so we got these three going on. I don't know, is there another? See, this 42 and a half for the Packers and Bucks. That bugs me. So you took, uh, let's say, if you went uh, for the Falcons win, you went for the Falcons to cover and you went under for the 43 and a half. Falcons to cover under 43 and a half. Yes. So that's 12 to 1 on a $5 ticket. That's 63 bucks in return. That, hell but, yeah, dude. I, but the thing is, whenever I bet on the fucking Falcons, bro, whenever I bet ah, on the fucking Falcons, yeah, it's something stupid happens. Teams, I am betting on Geno Smith and Marcus Mariota. This is not... That is... These are people I That's would not get to... to I would not terrifying. trust them with my physical money. So I would that leave that terrifying. one off. Um, at six points, I still feel good about that at five bucks. Yeah, that yeah. covers my day, right? Yeah. So... I think you got it, though. I, I think you'll get it. I, I, I like that. So we're going to bet heavy on the uh, on the Chiefs today. Uh, providing anything absolutely ridiculous uh, coming from the Colts, which I don't see happening. I hope they get their shit together. I just hope it's not this week. Yeah. So uh, no, I, I hope Mama Dragon comes in and talks some, some baseball news, especially with the playoffs coming up. Like I don't know much about baseball. I tend to just follow the Braves every once in a while, so I see highlights. So I would just sit here and listen and just ask questions. All I know is to Aaron honest, Judge is about to get fucking paid next year. That's yeah, all dude, I know I right now. Going my man is not even done playing yet, and he's already going to be a Hall of Famer. Like, dude. Yeah, I, I dude. am interested to see some of the offseason moves this year. I think what is, yeah, because the trade's done for this year, I think. But, yeah, um, but yeah no, if, if uh, Mama Dragon, um, there are very few people that actually scare me a little bit. Mama Dragon scares me a little bit. She's a tiny That's lady. That's always good, but though. Is it? <laughs> She's allowed to have firearms, and she lives on a farm. Uh, nice. But, <laughs> Wait, is that not a thing in Canada? It, it is, but I like I said, I grew up in the city. I'm used to immigrants. I, gotcha. I grew up. I, with, I didn't know because like we're like here. Like I know this is way off topic. Yeah. But obviously, you know, everybody in this country is allowed to own firearms, regardless of their level of knowledge of use or not. <laughs> but is that different? I haven't been paying attention to news at all lately because I'm just like shit's too depressing. Are you guys allowed to have firearms in Canada outside yeah. of farm? Yeah, there you Mike. can get permits. You can go shooting all the time. Like we got, oh, okay, like okay. in Winnipeg alone, there was probably about four or five gun clubs. So okay. there is okay. there's quite a bit of hunting up here. Like hunting is really big here. So, yeah. but yeah, you get that. But uh, for the most part, yeah, when you're getting robbed, it's it's still usually a knife. But they'll still pull. There, there's actually a guy making 3D printed guns here for a while. So uh, he just yeah, got two years because apparently making guns <laughs> only only Not let's good. say two years in provincial. Jail, not even a, not even a federal one, but it's wow. Canada. Uh, yeah, but the thing is, yeah, that's uh, and I went in, and I don't know if I've ever talked about this, but when I went in, I went in for cocaine, but I had a significant amount, like more than, uh, let's just say it was over a few pounds of it, and uh, yeah, I got two and a half years, but yeah, there there's weird because in, I'm pretty sure if I was in the states. You know, they would have locked me up and threw away the key, but... Yep. But that's, that's the odd. thing. But you guys with weed... And the things I had weed on me, but my yeah. possession of everything else was so much greater. It wasn't even worth filling out the weed charges. So they yep. just dropped those. And I had I had at least five pounds on me. Oh, and that was shit. it. You know, it was... Uh, but that's it. But that's... Uh, I, I lived... Uh, I lived a very wild and misled youth. Uh, luckily so, uh, now. Here's the deal. So... I, me and my wife almost got arrested for that same thing. And here's how. So I had a roommate back in the day who, uh, I had lost my license just because I was young and stupid, didn't pay my insurance and whatnot. Yeah, had to get a provisional license and whatnot. So I get pulled over because I was just learning how to drive a standard car and I grinded all my gears and shit and the cops saw me doing it and he pulled me over. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> shit, I'm not technically supposed to be driving right now. Shit. So, he pulls us over. My roommate, they were going to search us. 
My wife starts fidgeting around with her purse. The cop looks in the back seat, like, "Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing?" She's like, "I'm going to get, I'm going to get some gum." Flashes the inside of her purse to the cop, and the cop's like, "Oh, okay, you're cool." They're like, "What are you guys doing?" And I'm like, "I'm coming home from work. I have a provisional license that lets me drive between home and work." And they're like, "All right, get the fuck out of here, right? Just go home. Don't. We're not even gonna fuck with you. Just go home." And I'm like, "Oh my god." My roommate at the time was like, "Okay." Here's the deal, guys. We were almost in a shitload of trouble. And I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> they were like, they were going to search us. Your wife kind of got us out of this situation here. I had a lot of cocaine stashed in my underwear. They were going to find this, and we were all going to go to jail. Every single one of us were going to go to jail. He's like, your wife saved us from a lot of jail time. And I'm like, oh, jeez. And it wasn't even like, like you said, it wasn't five pounds. It was like, I don't know, maybe ten bags. Yeah. Like, it wasn't a lot. So, trust me, I don't judge anybody on any of this shit because I know how easily I could have gotten caught up in some crazy shit. So, there is no judgment coming here from this end. And that's it. I understand. It's uh, it's always appreciated. But, yeah, that's it. You know, you live, you learn. Uh, as yeah, far yeah, as yeah. I'm concerned, if it ain't violent and it ain't gross, you can, you can be taught otherwise. But, yeah, uh, yeah. but so, you know... Thanks so much for this, man. Um, I've been having a lot of fun doing this show. Uh, we will yeah. continue on next week. I am going to have to look into uh, a different OBS. I would like to go live on multiple platforms, but I've been having issues with Streamlabs, so I am going to have to look oh, yeah. at OBS itself, I guess. And Yeah, uh, just use normal. I use regular OBS, and it gives you... Let me open it right now, and I'll give you a heads up real quick, if you don't mind. No problem. Um, so when you go regular OBS, and I go into my, uh, hold on, scene selections. Yeah, so I can go different scene selections. So I could like, let's say if I wanted to go live on Twitch, I could do that. If I had a TikTok setup where I wanted to stream to TikTok, you can choose a different inference uh, instance. I think it's called instance or. Uh, at scene selection or something like that or a different dock or something I forgot what it's called right now but you can set it up for TikTok so that it looks like it's on your phone okay. and you can stream like a normal stream on your phone which most people aren't doing on TikTok I found out Gonza taught me that as he was streaming it he was streaming Call of Duty to TikTok the other day like he was streaming on Twitch and everybody was flipping out oh. um, so yeah you can set up different in regular OBS you can set up different stream setups for different apps i don't know if you can do that in Streamlabs or not but i've rocked with obs the entire time i've never wavered the one thing that brought me to Streamlabs was it gave me like i can easily like just a click of the button go live on twitch youtube facebook trovo <clears throat> and whatever yeah, yeah. like up to five at once so i had a five yep. uh, option for a multi-platform so that's really why i got it and we got it like when we first started just because you know it was 99 bucks for the year Yep. You know, I was like, okay, well, if I'm going to use it, I may as well get used to it. But we're coming up to December anyway, so I've got to change it. But I was having yeah. a talk with, uh, <clears throat> with a friend of our stream, uh, Yoshi Plays. Uh, he has moved over to Trovo. But I noticed that, because um, I'd love to do this on Trovo as well, there is uh, there is a good community on there as well that I'd like to work on. But the problem with this is last week when we were going live on uh, YouTube as well as yep. Twitch, I noticed that it was just constantly lagging out. So um, Streamlabs, I am told, is very power hungry, and it's causing a lot yes. of that because right now I'm just live on Twitch and it doesn't seem to have a problem. I almost claimed collusion between Twitch and Streamlabs because whenever I try to add something else to Twitch, yep. it tells me to go fuck myself. So yep. um, so yeah, but I'll have to look at some other shit. Um, I would very. I think much you can actually do that with normal OBS. You can go live on multiple places with normal OBS. Well, and that's what Yoshi was telling me, and he says that he uses yep. Restream as well, and yep. uh, he can go up to about seven. But like I said, there's only a key few that I want to go live on. But I'd like to be live on YouTube, Trovo, and Twitch at the same time with our show. Um, but yep. we have to work on overlays as well. Luckily, it's an 18 week season. So we got 15 yep. more weeks to get this shit together. Just, and then we'll uh, be just, ready for next just, season. <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. Before you go. Yep. So I was talking to one of my moderators, right? And the uh, the watch party idea. Fantastic idea, by the way. Thursday night watch parties. Yeah. Here's the way we have to go about it. Because
because it's NFL, it will be against terms of service on Twitch. Fuck. But he gave me a workaround. He was like, dude, stream it to your Discord, right? And then do a regular stream on Twitch of like, I don't know, you playing a game or some shit and you reacting to the NFL game and post like, yo, NFL watch party and then tell them where to go to your Discord and just leave people there. He's like, you can have a whole bunch of people watching in your Discord and then have a separate channel for just you and your buddies who are watching that they can hear but you won't be able to hear like everybody else. Not a bad So you basically can promote your Discord in Twitch while you're, I don't know, gaming or doing whatever the hell you want to do while watching the football game at the same time and promoting it like, yo, NFL Thursday Night Football Watch Party, which I guess would have to be me because you said it, you don't have Amazon Prime. Yeah, that was well, we do have Amazon Prime, but it's not coming up on Amazon Prime Canada, which is really uh, pissing me off because our, uh, so our IPs block that. that shit. Yeah. So let me just let me let me get that sorted. It might be a couple weeks, but let me get that sorted out, and I'll see if I can do it because then I can just sit there and play video games and watch football at the same time. Well, if we could do that for the does. Thanksgiving days, like I'll book a day off fucking work for your guys' Thanksgiving. That doesn't bother me at all. And uh, we could sit there and watch fucking football all day. But all right, Cena, I want to go have a quick puff before this game starts here. But uh, thanks so much for coming in. Thank you everyone for coming in and uh, and uh, and hanging out with us here at the Puff Pass and Kick Show. Uh, Go Chiefs, go Cowboys. We will be back next week with some more picks, some more walk of shame from the week before. But until then, be safe, stay beautiful, take it easy, Sploot Nation.